we've got in store here. Find the best move for black again. So we're going to utilize the same thing that we did in the last one. It's looking at the king first and seeing what can actually be attacked. The bishop can take this pawn here and it might be obvious straight away, you know, some players may just go, oh, well, it's this, this, but we're focusing on our sort of strategy, which is looking at the king first, seeing if there's any checks or checkmate type patterns directly towards the king first. <clears throat> so the bishop can physically take the pawn. The king can take, so the rook doesn't have to take, so you won't get away with the queen coming round. The bishop takes, say the rook takes, rook comes up, puts it, but then the knight's protecting this square. So it doesn't look like there's a clear way in, there's no bishop sacrifice, that looks meaty. Queen's not coming here, bishop's protecting that area. So it doesn't look like that. So what else is there? The queen doesn't have any protection on it, as we can see. The rook doesn't have any protection on it, but nothing's hitting it at the minute. And the bishop doesn't have any protection on it, but we're not attacking the bishop. Closest one to our king is this queen, which has no protection, but it can easily move out of the way. Can it not? Bishop can attack two pieces, but it's the knight is defended. It's just that the queen is kind of trapped when we're looking at that. So the focal point on the queen has given us this potential trapping of the queen. We come here, is attacking the queen, so the queen can't go here. Only two squares, it physically, well, well, it could have gone there, but now it can't. And now it has to go here and the bishop will take it. Or it can take a pawn, but the knight will take it. Or it can take the bishop. So really, I think it's as simple as that. Oh! Now we didn't reckon on doing any further moves. So what's the scores on the doors here? The thing is, if we take the queen, the rook comes down and takes the queen, we we are material up still because let's have a look they've got one two three four is it a piece for a piece they're treating it like it's a piece for a piece out them. the rook takes rook takes but they will have one two three four we will have one two three four does that balance out? Is there something better? I don't think there's anything better. I think we're just taking the queen. But why does it feel like there's not much advantage there just because we're going that way? We take. The rook takes. The rook takes. One, two. I'm counting that rook. <laughs> One, two, three, four. No, no, that's four. They've got four there. One, two, three, four. A few more pawns and stuff. I suppose it probably might win the end game type thing, but yeah, I don't think that that. That was correct, but one, two, three, four, one, three, four. One, two, three, four, one, two, four, five, six. So two more pawns out of that. So the saying you should win this end game. But it's not clear. Anyway. So really pattern recognition starts from the start of the game. This is why you have um this quick and dirty tactics type of mentality. You know, how can I squish the king as quickly as possible? win a chess game quickly, win a chess game in five moves, you know, that type of thing. Um, developing a laziness in terms of, wow, I want to crush this guy as quickly as possible. It can happen. Shall we try that in this game? How quickly can we crush this player? Yeah, ut utilizing quick and dirty tactics type stuff. So the practicality is that we want to be trying to squish the king. 
right as quickly as possible let's hit this center so it's not really thinking too much about actually castling we want to just make space towards the king area we're hoping to take with this one because then gives us a bit of space but they haven't done so we're going to just see if we can make some more space towards the king try and give them something to think about okay so they've taken with the pawn which is good now we're going to just come with the queen attacking the pawn obviously coming to defend with a smaller piece doesn't do that it's going to take and put a check on the king i don't know what that was We want to end this game. We're just going to show quick and dirty tactics, pattern recognition training. That's what we're doing at this minute. We don't play like this normally. So I'm going to just bring the knight here. We're just showing the potential for movements on the board. Going to the white square, dark square bishop, knight can take. Oh, just that was genuinely my fault then because I was just about to say the knight can come here but I physically actually moved the bishop there because so I am using this um, old mouse which is good, stalwart so they've moved the queen out of the way of that fork and we may as well continue with the fork personally because the rook's not going anywhere but we may not go for the rook because I'm trying to make space for attacking the king. Queen's there defending. Fair enough, we go for a trade. Alright, so the rook's not going anywhere. Could hit the queen just to say get out of the way. So that we can contact. Uh, I think we're going to do that. We're going to hit the queen to say get out of the way. Maybe we don't go for the exchange. But they might go here though. Just to stay in the game. But the idea is we're trying to get to... Ooh, that's going to hurt. I'm going to take this here. Might, they might resign at this point. And... Oh no, they're not... So like I, I don't have any control over who I'm playing or whatever. We've just decided to do the quick and dirty tactics, pattern trading, tactic type stuff. And it seems to be paying off. I'll put a check on the king here. Got a white square bishop that can put a check on as well. But he's going to hide in the corner here. Which is not really what we want to do. So if we push this pawn, knowing that they're going to do that, so it makes space for the bishop to be able to come here. I think we're going to do that. Looking for the bishop coming here when he's trying to escape. He does have the bishop being able to defend actually, if the queen does, does come and attack. So that might be a bit of their saving grace, might it? Or should we come with the bishop? Hmm. Anyway, let's do that. I think the bishop will just come and defend. Not done. So the queen, sorry, bishop can come here like we planned. So the bishop can come and defend here. They're not doing that, so the next stage is, can one of the rooks go and hit that queen? If we come here with, oh, hey, hey, come here with the knight, looking for the rook to put some pressure on the king. Bishop's coming down, giving itself up. Looks like they've given up completely now, haven't they? So, like I said, I don't know who I'm playing. I, I can't choose the ratings of the players that we're playing against in this one. But for some strange reason, they've ended up allowing us this type of stuff. So, um, we can come here with the queen. Bishop or the knight can actually come and defend. We could attack the rook if we wanted to and get the rook off the board. But I think there's more pressure on the king, really. We can bring the bishop here. The knight can defend, though. 
So I'm going to go with the queen first, putting the checks on the king. That's what a pattern recognition tr training exercise would show. It'd be like going, well, what's the forcing move? And throughout the start of us doing this dirty tactics type thing, um, that's what we're looking at, the forcing moves for these pattern training things. The king's in the center of the board. Bishop probably needs to be coming here. I think that almost might be it, I think. Yeah. Nice one. So that's a nice example of pattern training in the games if you're really wanting to go in there um, and start blasting away and tend to find that in the early, you know, the early um, rating levels, you know, the 800, 900, the thousands, 1100s, and then the 1200s start realizing that that doesn't really work all the time, does it? I need to be looking at opening safely, looking after my king, looking after my pieces and working together a little bit better. But if it's done well in the early part, when you're playing 1100s and that's how they're attacking and finding those spaces and crushing your king, that's because you've allowed them that. It's not like they're doing anything genius. It's, it's that you've allowed them that and you've been shot by them actually just attacking your king or the spaces around your king. So that's the art of pattern recognition. That's pattern training. That's what it helps you to do. But in the real world of chess, playing like over the board or playing higher level players or higher rated players than yourself, you have to be very aware that you're not going to get away with that type of stuff yet. Yeah? They will know how to defend against it. So you have to be very careful and choose when to do these tactical pattern type devastating moves. Um, make sure that it's locked on. Make sure it's got a continuation and it's not just a one time hit. Because if it's a one time hit, you'll then find that, oh, well, I didn't realize that they could do this. What you want to do with your tactical type stuff i'm not a tactical player um what what i want to do with improving my position on the board is really about looking at what can the opponent do is this really nailed on this move is this check and another check really nailed on or can they actually just sacrifice a piece you know or can they actually just take it off the board the piece that you're attacking the king with you have to look at all these things because the weirdest things happen when you see players play, especially lower rated players playing um, and doing tactical arrangements and feeling like they're actually winning the game and then all to find out that it's been all wasted because the opponent simply whipped the piece off the ball that's attacking or they've checkmated them because they didn't realise that they were in a bad position. So it's, it's looking at the whole picture when you're doing your pattern recognition. Um, ideally, you'd want it to look like, you know, when you're doing your pattern training type stuff and you're finding the answers like that. So all the answers are just so you can quickly go through your pattern training. And so you're a demon at doing pattern, you know, tactics training and all that sort of stuff. When it comes to actual reality, it's not going to be the exact position. You'd be very lucky if it's that exact position that is in the actual tr pattern training thing and you get away with it. That's fine. And you might do that for a few games. But in the longer term, when you're playing people who are seasoned, you're going to find that you need to be a little bit more, what's the word, robust about your defense, about your attack, about your counter attack, about your position on the board. The position is key because at the end of the day, your position starts with, well, am I in a good position to do this tactical arrangement? And where do I end up after that? What is my position like during each of the stages of that pattern training type situation? So position is key. So that was a nice training session for um, understanding how to use real pattern training methodology and concepts. And we're playing outside of our usual scope and we're just looking to see how how can you practice these not quick and dirty tactics but how can we tactically 
start pressuring the king area, the pieces around the king, right from the on onset, just to basically improve our attacking ability. So I'm going to bring the bishop here, and we're hopefully looking to see if we can demonstrate that in this game, because we have that focal point on it. We don't usually play like this. This was the way I used to play many moons ago, very aggressive, not looking at my back end though, so that's where it suffered. But for this exercise here, we want to see whether or not we can pull out the tactical arrangement, tacking towards the king area, and putting pressure on key pieces as quickly as possible. That's not what we usually do, we like to pace it out, but we want to try and do that today. I think what we were going to do is, we're going to take here, and there we'll take our bishop without their pawn. Now we've opened up space in front of their king. They aren't actually taken with their, um, so I think we can just safely bring the bishop here now then. I don't think there's anything else that can touch it apart from the bishop, which I think will come here. Yeah, or do we keep the x-ray through onto the queen? So that's for a take back. I don't think there's any take back situation other than the fact that they probably should have taken our bishop with the pawn. And let's have a look, where do we want to go? I'm actually going to go here with the bishop. We'll click X on here. So our idea is we're trying to go for aggressive attacking. At, oh, they've resigned. Yeah. One, two, three, four. One, two, three minor pieces. So they're down a minor piece from the quick pattern training type stuff that we've done. Let's see what we've got. Find the best move for black. Straight away, the king, despite itself, doesn't look like the rook. Oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Oh, yeah, it's that one, isn't it? Just coming here. Got to check on the king. King either takes or moves, but then this pawn comes here. So that, that looks like a pretty straightforward uh, maneuver. Check, and then go for the queen and get the rook off the board. Wants us to continue. All right, okay, let's push through the center here. We're looking for quick, and quick tactics, quick pattern recognition. Try and end the game. Just to show it can work if you focus on it, but you have to be very careful utilizing it. I'm going to put a check on the king. Fake. Keep the x-ray on the king, maintaining some type of pressure. Take the pawn, we're on the rook. Take the knight as well. We don't need to rush to take the knight yet because the bishop's not under attack. So bring this knight here so that we can put a check on the king with the queen side castle in. And have a look at the position, see if there's anything meaty. <clears throat> Bishop can take the knight off the board. We'll take the bishop, rooks off the back. I think going to take the knight. Don't even actually need to do anything. Could we'll just bring this bishop here. Can bring this bishop attacking, but the pawn's going to drop. Does that weaken the position of attack? We can bring it back and attack the rook. And that might work for us. So we would be attacking a higher piece. We'll attack the rook. Take the rook off the board. And they've misplaced the fact of the knight being able to take here. So I'm going to take a pawn. And now they look like they're giving pieces up because they may have made a mistake. So we could take the knights. I think we can take the knight, can't we? Or we can take the pawn here. I'm going to take a piece, take the pawn. And develop the knight. See this way. Where's the king? Develop the knight. They're moving very quickly. Spring the rook across. 
He does have a white square bishop potential. Going to take, don't want to complicate anything. Take this pawn, we're on the rook. Then we can attack their bishop. We're actually on this pawn twice, so we could take the pawn and then, then attack the bishop. Although his bishop's probably going to take our knight, is going to be on our rook. Yep, so that's a key thing to note. I'm going to attack the what the days. Bishop Spassky time. We'll just block the bishop in. So it's all a bit frantic, a bit crazy. We can take here because it's we can still attack the bishop, I think. That we're looking at this. Take a pawn. Take the knight. Yeah, they're moving way too quick now. With no thought to the movements, which is good for us. White is eighteen hundred and black is seventeen hundred, touching on the eighteen hundred. So the seventeen hundred. And we are looking at find the best move for white. So let's use the methodology. Might be able to see it straight away, but let's not rush this and just take our time. What's the pressure on the king? King's jammed in the corner. There's nothing that can put an immediate check on. Well, th there is. The knight can come here and put a check on, but the pawn can take. So it doesn't look like it's that move. If that pawn wasn't there, then there would be a check, but there's no mate. If this bishop was here, which it's not, that's still not forcing anything. So let's throw that one out the window. That one does put a check on the king, so they have to do something about it. It is forced. They have to take, they have to get rid of the knight because the knight's putting the check on because the king can't move. So that could be the element of the forcing maneuver. So the pawn takes it. And then if we have a look at the position of the rook, the rook then can come here and put a check on. So nothing can actually touch it. And the king can't move across because the bishop's blocking. So that would be the continuation. I'm going to put my hat on it. That that is it. And they take and bring the rook here, and the job is done. Shall we do another one just to um, sign it off? I know I said that was the last one, but we seem to got, get through that one a bit quick. Um, let's do another one. Find the best move for white. Okay, where's the king? So immediately, eyes are drawn to this. Looks very similar to a game I've recently played. <laughs> Okay, and this is between white is 1800 and black black is 1800 as well, so two 1800s. Oh, I didn't look at the rating for that last one, did I? I'll look at it afterwards. Just remember. So immediately drawn to this, putting the check on here. And it looks like it would be a checkmate after all of that. So queen comes here, the queen takes, then the rook takes, and then king can't go anywhere. So my eyes are drawn instantly to that, and to that, and that's pretty straightforward. 1510. It's a long session in Taming the Beast. Just bring the knight across. Let's hit this center palm. And we're playing like a slow thinker, so we don't want to be termed as like a super fast player type thing So in this game. So we can take our time. The element of going for those quick and dirty type things that we're practicing in this little mini-series is not about the speed aspect. Um, it's about looking at the position on the board and seeing what we can do. We are still looking at trying to end the game quickly, but as we've shown, 
it's not always possible if the opponent's uh, converting and playing good simple chess. So we're going to take the pawn here. So we, the idea is that it's the moves, how many moves it's taken us in the game. That's the speed I'm talking about, not the physical speed. So we're going to take the queen off here. But we're not counting the moves, but they've given us a pawn, which I believe should stand us in good stead. It's only a pawn, but the psychological aspect of gaining the pawn might do us something. Ooh, but we're down tempo in castling. We're down tempo in castling. So we're going to have to go the queen side, aren't we? This rook's just going to attack the knight. Knight's attacking the knight. I think we can castle now. Don't need to get bent out of shape over that. So the element of the quick stuff has gone because his king is like, ooh. But if we take, then he takes. So we're going to take because we're on a higher piece, which is the rook. It is a piece for a piece because he takes, takes. But we will take an x-ray through to their bishop, opening up space in front of their king. But like I was saying, the, the quick and dirty aspect has gone now because we, we're in end game now. All right, so they're now attacking this pawn here, which is attacking higher pieces. If we take the bishop off the board, then he's going to be quids in. I think we're going to have to bring this bishop here, protecting the pawn and doubling the pawns here. So we've now gone into defense nanny state, but throughout all of that, we've opened up space in front of their king. He's still chomping at the bit to try and get that. So he's put a two on one on there now on the bishop. Uh, if we go like this, he's going to get the pawn as well. We've got the bishop, so maybe we shouldn't be too greedy. Let's take the bishop. And let's take the bishop. It's coming for the rook. So it's more to set to call for that rook. And the rook's already gone now. This other rook's already gone. So they've left us with material advantage. Going for an exchange, is there anything that can support that exchange or do we need to? We can take a pawn here. Rook's probably looking to come down here. The knight is defending this area. I think we can take a pawn. I don't like greedy munching pawns. Maybe they're doing other things. If we take his own in the file, but it's not really ownership in the proper sense because we've got pieces that are guarding the area. So I'm fairly comfortable taking that pawn. Ready to bring the bishop here, at, but not just yet because the pawn will get taken. Can bring it here quite nicely just to get the rook involved if we were doing that. But the knight is probably going to stay there forever and a day. We do have this open space. Maybe we can start attacking. But let's not rush it. Bring this rook here, attacking this pawn, probably defends with this one. Doesn't. So do we just get the rook off the board? It looks like they're just wanting to give that rook up. A rook up. But I think we can just come here now with the bishop. Just try and improve the end bit. Okay, so he's coming down for the pawn. Bishop, sorry. Let's just bring this here. Again, don't mind doubling the pawns in that, in that aspect. And that's going to be saved anyway. I think time now we can just attack this rook. Knight, sorry. Unless there's some magical position I'm missing. Let's attack the knight. So we seem to get through to this position pretty quickly. Um, so move 21. So fairly, fairly happy with that. It's not over as we say. You know, they can find something like we said don't mind doubling the pawns here so let's take it's not even doubling actually just capturing knight's got no protection but you'd have to get this out of the way the bishop can just take and block 
So interesting session we're having today. Um, so obviously attacking the pawn, but he's going to be attacking this pawn here. Which one do we want to let go? We bring the rook up here. Knight comes and takes this pawn, put a check on the king. We have to let something go. We don't want to be greedy. I think we're just bringing this here. Yeah, let's just do that. I think they call it throwing them a crumb. A crumb or two. As they suffered a bit of devastation, but we're trying to improve our position. Get the check on the king. Don't know which way they're going to move. Put the check on, like we said. Now it's not really got anywhere to go, but I don't have another piece that can attack it. Unless I bring my knight in and somehow. I don't think the knight can get in there because the bishop's jamming it down here. One. Two. Three. It would be an even exchange. Okay, I don't mind that. Let's bring the knight up. Would have been better if it was on a dark square but it's not because the bishop would have been able to take it looks like he's going defending it attack the pawn always check to make sure the position hasn't changed you know say like if they moved there then we'd be able to go for that or they've moved there and we can put a check on but there's no forks so i'm going to take i didn't really want to take i wanted to be attacking the knights but anyway we'll take this pawn well, i think the rook's coming defending the knight isn't it maybe i don't know i don't think they'll give the rook up so we won't be able to come back here to come here we have to fashion another way of coming back around again. Is there any more crumbs to be thrown? Put a bit of a check on the king. They're taking my attention away from my goal. Maybe I don't need to be focusing on the knight so much. But it's out of commission. Knight. Knight. Okay, I think we're happy with the knight. Let's move the knight. What do they say? The hardest game to win is a one game. So we're clearly winning. But we just need to just keep the momentum going and not fall asleep and make some type of errors such as giving them space for the rook to come here or well, simple basic chess simple basic maneuvers <coughs> excuse me will work in this type of end game it's when you forget those simple things like protecting pieces or simple attacks or captures. Putting the check here is nice. Missing the fact that they've got pieces under threat. Put the check. We were going to be coming here anyway. Bounce back around again here.
Yep. Put the check on. So he's only really got one piece in the game. And we have really, but it's it's still free. Ooh, close, close. We're looking for it to bury its own rook, really. Come here, got a two on one on the palm. Comes back up. Look and take. Come back and still be pressuring the rook knight. Slow, steady grind. It's this little runner says, Love the grind. Okay, take with a check. Keep this knight under surveillance. Oh, this time we can actually attack the knight. And they will want to take it, won't they? Bishop's still got it under surveillance. I think we can attack the knight, but then his king can come and attack the rook. Attacks the rook. We go up and down and it keeps attacking the rook. That's the annoying thing. I don't want to do anything that's going to annoy me. So we come there. King can't come here, but it can go there attacking the rook. And we come down. Can't come here because the knight is protecting that square. It can't chase it. Cool. Right. Let's attack the knight. I'm sure, they're going to breathe a sigh of relief that it's done something. It's taken a piece off the board because it wasn't getting in the game. But like we said, annoying thing. At least we've worked out. We can just bring the rook down here. Maybe they've got so much fog in them now they're just going to hit the bishop or something. Done a bit of tactics, well, puzzle training, whatever, pattern training. And then we're applying it in these particular games here, which we don't really play like that, but we're trying to demonstrate um, understanding the, the mentality, the psychology behind playing aggressively, understanding that the back end may not be as covered 